Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel and happy Wednesday. I hope you all are doing great. I am so sorry I missed posting a video last week. In the time since you've seen me, I've had a catastrophic computer breakdown and so I had to get the tech hubby to get me a new one and we needed to work out all of the programs that I use to provide a tutorial for you all. But I think I have all of those details worked out now. If you see this video, it means that we got it sorted. And so for today, I thought it would be fun to share a kind of hybrid project. And I wanted to create a slimline greeting card, you can see here, but combine it with a loaded pocket project. And so that's what I did. I have this beautiful summer inspired nautical kind of collection, which is perfect for Michigan. And I have these pockets just loaded with really fun inserts. This was a lot of fun to make and it was pretty easy. If you are interested in creating one for yourself like this, stick with me and we'll make this together. So along with my new to me computer, I also have a new backdrop. I picked this up from Joann's. It's just a piece of pattern poster board and I really liked it in the store. I liked it when it was upstairs when I brought it home and put it under the lights. I wasn't quite sure. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you think this is gonna work. It has a little bit more of a darker vibe, so I'm not sure how the colors are gonna play out. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. So before I get started, I'll show you my paper collection. This is from Authentique. I know they're not making papers anymore, but I think there are quite a few very nice and nautical inspired collections available at this time. This is just what I had in my stash. And so what I like about this is I have all of that red, white, and blue, uh, very summer inspired palette, but because it's nautical as opposed to patriotic, it kind of reads as a more seasonal kind of collection rather than just for the holidays. And I did work with the 12 by 12 papers. I just brought this one down because it was easier to put in the bin. And this collection at the time also came with a whole kind of tablet of the journal cards. So what I like about this project too is that you're gonna be able to work through more of these focal images or cut aparts because you're gonna be loading them in the pockets. So if you are making a regular card, you would just pick one um, or maybe layer two, but this way you can work through more. And I know I always have a lot of extra journal cards when I get through with my papers. So it's authentic. And I think this would be really good for any occasion or any holiday. Christmas would be fun or Halloween. Um, so just pick a collection that you like that has a lot of journal cards and then you can work with that. And so I'm going to work with a standard size slimline profile. For me, that's four by nine. And I did make my card base already. This has the pattern paper on the inside. I just like it to be finished off. And I like the extra bulk and thickness that those additional layers add. For the whole card, I'm going to be working with a pretty navy card stock. This happens to be pretty thick as well. And I really appreciate that for this card because those pockets are a little bit heavy. So I did crepe this card base. It is a piece of 65 pound weight card stock, nine inches high by eight inches wide and scored at four. So we get that very nice slimline profile. For the card stock, it's going to be eight and seven eighths inches. It's going to be eight and seven eighths inches high by three and seven eighths inches wide and that's gonna give us that really nice border that we like of all of those layers. Want to bring in my pattern paper as well. This is such a cute pattern. It kind of reminds me of quilts um, because it has that faux stitching around, but it has a lot of detail in a smaller size. So even though we're gonna cover up quite a lot of it, you're still going to be able to appreciate what that pattern is about. For the larger pattern paper, it's eight and three quarter inches high, three and three quarter inches wide. And I'm going to begin first by putting on my pocket. Let me show you first how I made my pocket. So, you know, I just don't like to do all that very extreme measuring that's fussy and uh, prone to error if you're me. So what I wanna do is take a piece of my card stack and I cut it to be three and a half by five. So I'm just going to, so I'm just going to score that at three inches. That is the depth of my pocket. 
And so I'm going to switch the orientation of that and put it right along the top of my scoreboard. It doesn't matter where that falls. You're just going to line up your pattern paper that you're covering with the very top and then have it run right alongside one of the indentations on your scoreboard so that you can make a mark right there and then very carefully shift this over until you get a full score line on this side as well. That way, when you fold over those flaps, you're not going to get that bulky, weird uh, bit in the middle because it wasn't measured quite large enough, but not too large that there's a gap. So now what you wanna do is go ahead and fold on your score lines all the way around. And then I'm gonna come in with my scissor and cut off the excess at an angle. I want to cut right through where those score lines intersect. So when it does fold over, it's not going to create a lot of additional bulk. So what I would do now is put my double-sided adhesive tape on the inside of those flaps and then also on the outside because that's what we're going to use to attach it to the page and the card. And we're going to come in with that double uh, adhesive combo that I have. So for the part that goes around the pattern paper, you can just use that double-sided tape. But when you go to add the pocket portion onto the card base, you do want to add that extra layer of adhesive. So I have already prepared my pocket for this page and you can see I do have my adhesive there on the back. So I'll just go ahead and lay my pattern paper in here. And I did put a little bit of extra on here just because I was working along not thinking about my layers so much. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the tape off of that bottom portion. And then I can get that lined up really well along the bottom just by folding that up and making sure that both of the sides have room to fold over properly. So now you can see that I have encased the bottom with that pocket. This is going to give you a lot more room on the inside to put your tags or other bits of flat mementos or keepsakes. So I'll just go ahead and pull that remaining tape off. And here's where my Tombow is going to come in. And I'm just going in from the edge because I don't want any of this to squeeze out. So there is that layer for the wet adhesive. And I'll just go ahead and flip this over and then line this up and it would get my usual borders. I'm gonna pull it a little closer to me so that I can see over the top a little better. And so now this is going to be the front part of my card, kind of like a base. And this is one of the pockets. It's a good time to go ahead and add this to the card base now. So I'll just go ahead and do that as well. And this is gonna be another place for that double adhesive combo. So I'm gonna just flip that over and bring it a little closer again so that I can see over top and go ahead and center this just like I did the pattern paper. It's easier, I think, to get the centering portion done on the top part because that is where it is most noticeable and it will be a little bit more forgiving if you get it a little bit off center. So here is our base in our first pocket. What I wanna do is add another pocket. So that's going back into my loaded pocket kind of design. I want to put another portion here on the top so that when I add all of the inserts, I'm gonna get a nice full arrangement on the top. Now, how do you do that when you can't wrap around the bottom again because this is already attached. Well, I've just gone ahead and cut another piece of that same pattern and I will recreate this as I did the first one. So on the pocket itself, the measurement did not change and the process did not change, but the measurement for that 
top paper did in. So this is going to be three and three quarter wide by four and a half inches tall. And so now we're gonna have to get that Tombow back out because we've got a pocket. And then this time I'm just gonna flip it over so that I can line it up from the top where it will be most noticeable. And it will appear to have a solid piece of cardstock running along behind these pockets, but you just know that there is a second piece. Another reason not to just add a pocket with those flaps to that first piece without adding something inside the pocket is you wanna be able to slide things in easily and they can get caught on the flaps if they're on this side of the pattern paper. So you have a nice smooth flat surface to include your inserts in. So next you want to put something on that pocket to get it to coordinate with the collection. And so for my first pocket, I picked something more neutral so that I can add more embellishing onto it. And so this piece is two and seven eighths by three and three quarter. And this is just going to go right over the top and I'm gonna get those same nice borders that I like all the way around. This is just fine for your double-sided adhesive. And my next pocket, I wanted to switch it up a little bit and add that more vibrant stripe. So the same measurements for this as well because the pocket is the same size on the top. You just don't have quite as much room to fill it. So now we can think about adding those fun inserts. That's why we made the loaded pocket so we can put fun things into it. For my bottom pocket, I do have a little bit more room. So I'm going to include an insert that's a little bit larger. This is that B side of the paper and I really thought those crabs were so funny. And I did want to build that on a very sturdy base. So I started with 110 pound card stack. It is three by five. The card stock that's navy is two and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And the pattern paper is two and three quarter by four and three quarter. And that's just going to slide right down into the back. I've got a little bit of a focal image for the top pocket. So I'll just go ahead and put that on now. It is going to overlap the top of the pocket. So you wanna keep your adhesives low so you don't accidentally seal up your pocket. And because I have a secondary flower arrangement, I do need to focus this closer to the left-hand side so that I'll have room for those flowers. And I think that just looks nice having that kind of a curved shape along the straight edge of the pocket, just a little bit more interesting. This was one of the journal cards or the cut aparts, and I just trimmed out that portion that would fit. So now you can see that does very easily run in and out of that pocket. You're not going to have any trouble with that getting caught on the focal image. And I just went through that tablet. There were some additional journal card cut aparts along with the pattern paper, the 12 by 12 size had some different variety. So there was four by six and then three by four. I went with the smaller ones and these came out of the tablet. I thought it would be fun to go ahead and use a decorative die that had a stitch edge and just kind of a curve shape to add a little bit more interest. I added a layer of that pretty blue weathered wood pattern. This is very neutral, so you can write on it if you wanna do your journaling or you could add pictures and go ahead and finish the back of these and it does have that nice stitch detail as well. I did put an eyelet in the top so that I could run this pretty uh, ribbon through. I think this is actually meant to be Christmas ribbon, but I just really liked that kind of geometric pattern on the top. It went along with the pattern on the background. And so I just looped that through and pulled it taut so that it would have a nice texture and add some detail, but not add a lot of bulk. And I picked two of the cards that I liked for this pocket. I just kind of wanted to alternate the dark and the light colors and the larger images. 
is so this can go here and it isn't really going all the way down in because now that we have a little bit of something in that pocket it will hold it up so you'll get a lot of depth see i can put these in as layers and kind of build in so that you can see all of them at one time now i do kind of want to and there's a fly here so if you see me swatting at something um, that would be that trying to exterminate my crafting area um, this is going to be a nice neutral base for my finishing details so let's go ahead and put those on now i have a flower arrangement I created this with a combination of that handmade flower. This is the Be Bold Blooms from Spellbinders. And I just went ahead and made that with, I just went ahead and made that with offcuts from the blue cardstock because now I know it coordinates very well because sometimes blue is hard to get matched up. I paired that with some very sweet little red flowers. These are from Little Birdie Crafts. I've got twine, I've got netting, and then I did include a very nice mirror cardstock layer of foliage. And that just kind of brings out a little bit of interest and detail. It also helps to break up the green. I didn't want a lot of green because this is a nautical card, and, but I did really want a little bit so that it looked a little bit more like a natural flower arrangement. And then I finished that off with a bow that I created with the slate. Uh, wrinkle ribbon that is from really reasonable ribbon and I really like this combination so I still get a nice blue color but it does not match too much to the flowers so that you can have a little bit of depth and it doesn't look like it's all one big blob of color and so I did build this arrangement to be fairly small and you can see I can add this to nearly the top of the pocket there and all of the fragile bits will remain inside the uh, card base so that they won't become damaged. I want to include a small little bit of charms here, just a little ship's wheels to kind of coordinate. And I think that silver really looks nice with the mirrored card stock. I don't have a lot of room on this for doilies. So this will be all the decoration that it gets. And because I laid out my flowers there, I could see where I wanted those charms to land. And I do want to just go ahead and tack those on with the hot glue and I'll run my string through. Then I can cover those cut edges with my flowers. And I think that is just enough to finish off the bottom portion, the bottom pocket of this card. So that will be that portion. Now the top pocket, remember, does not run the full length. So you're gonna have to decide what kind of inserts you want for that that are a little shorter. So I went back to that tablet of journal cards. I picked out two additional ones that I really liked the contrast in colors. So I've got the dark blue again, and then the lighter background. And I did like these larger images. I thought they were kind of nice that I don't typically get to use them on cards because I'm putting too many layers on. These were too large for that die that I used in the beginning, uh, but that is okay. I just went ahead and finished the back of them as well so that you could put on your pictures or journaling. Now, because these had some image that went all the way to the top, it would have not worked to put an eyelet in. So I just used a couple of coordinating paper clips and I wound my ribbon through that the same as I did the eyelets. And then I just clipped it on and it was easy to locate these based on not covering up the letters that's in the word. And so I'm just going to think of these as a great place to clip on a picture. If you have one that you don't want to adhere and glue down to the page, you could simply slide it underneath that clip and it would be very secure. So let's put these in as well. And because I have my blue that's darker over on this side, let's put it on this side here and go ahead and just slide those in at the same angle I did for the bottom portion. And that way I can have my trims going all throughout. So I did mention 
earlier that I want to include a second smaller flower arrangement. So I used the same red flower from the first, but just a smaller size. Rather than having the netting and the mirror card stuck in the green, I just went with the leaves that were cut from the blue card stuck and a little bit of twine and then one bow kind of off to the side. And I think that's going to be a nice balance uh, for this one down here because it kind of continues to fill in that space. So I'm going to angle this toward the outside and I'm being careful not to cover any of the words there on my focal image. I'm just adding that right up to the edge and then I'll just readjust my tags on the inside so that I can continue to keep that nice filled in arrangement. So the last thing I wanna consider is if I want to put on a couple of sequins. And I think this would be a nice place here to have them and then maybe a couple up on top. So I'll just go ahead and pull those out and I'll just give them a little test drive to see if I like it. Now, because this tag is not intended to slide fully into that pocket, this is not going to be a problem uh, about knocking those off. And I think that looks really nice. I'll do the same up here but I'm wondering if that third one is going to get in the way of the words. And so, yep, I think that is going to be a problem for that. So let's just go ahead and stick with the three that are on the anchor tag. And of course, I'm gonna put these on with my Tombow. And that's gonna be all for our Loaded Pocket Front Slimline greeting card. If you enjoyed this project, please let me know in the description below and make sure to give me a big thumbs up for this tutorial. You can find links to all our social media sites in the description below. And if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe and join my crafty little family by hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll be alerted every time we add new content. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.